If you create your own music, produce your own music, write your own music in Ableton Live, and you have hopes of getting and taking your song from the studio to the stage, then an important and crucial part of that is exporting stems out of Ableton Live. Uh, stems are super helpful because you get individual uh, tracks of each one of your parts of your song. And from there, you can then take those, load those into an Ableton Live set, and they're not going to have any of your MIDI effects, any of your processing um, uh, in the set. They're just going to be rendered versions to that. And that's going to help with CPU, but by having stems as opposed to just one song, you're going to get the flexibility to adjust parts to route to different outputs, and it's going to give you the most flexible setup and scenario. So what I thought I would do is talk about how to take a song in Ableton Live, like a song I've got here that I've produced in live using sounds in live, sounds I've recorded. How do I get that out of live and export it as stems? Let's dive in and let's talk about how uh, this process works. Now I will say this process has been updated since uh, previous versions of live, even previous tutorials I've done, and it's so much easier uh, than it used to be and it's easier than it's ever been to make this happen. So let's walk through it. So uh, here's my song. I've got a couple different parts uh, in my song. One thing I want to mention, when I'm at the final stage before I go to render my stems, I want to think about um, how I want things grouped. Like, do I want uh, all my drum, uh, individual drums separated out? Like, do I want a stem of uh, my tom, my kick, my snare, my whatever? Or do I want a mix, like a subgroup, a mix of my drums as one individual stem? And so in this particular song, I, you know, I want everything separated out. I want this bell ambience pad separate from this ambience pad, which is separate from really low bass separate from sub bass you get that but for this lead section here i've kind of decided that i want um this sound uh right here layered with these couple piano sounds i want to use these all together so about four sounds in total i, I really want to treat those as one stem which means um when i render this out to then bring back an ableton live to build a set um i don't want to to have separation of those sounds i want them uh, just one stem of them is one clip that says leads. Okay. So that's the first thing I think about when I'm having this conversation. What do I want to group? What do I want to leave separate? So all of this looks good to me. I think I'm ready to go here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire length of this track so that uh, I know I'm going from the beginning to the end here. And then I'm going to do command shift R. If you're on a PC, it would be control shift R uh, if you're on a Windows PC, but on a Mac, it would be command shift R. And that's going to take me to the export audio and video video tab. There's a couple options I'm going to point out here. Uh, the first thing here is the selection start. Or actually before that, let's talk about render start and render length. I want to make sure that the length of this is correct. I've found that if I select my song from the beginning to the end here, just like I did uh, here, uh, then it's always going to be the correct length. And so that's something I do before I get here. But I just want to double check that. Now, the next thing I need to decide is what track is going to be rendered. If, if I am taking this song and it's the final process, I've mastered in Ableton Live, I'm ready to upload this to a server to, to get to a streaming service or however I'm going to distribute this, then I would select render track master. And that, that means it's going to take everything down into a left, right uh, 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 audio file that then can be uploaded somewhere. But that's not what we want. We want a file that we can perform with on stage. We can run tracks with on stage. We want stems. We want separation, a multi-track file. Uh, I know there's articles where people complain about the, the use of stem and multi-track and say they're different. But uh, in live performance, I think they've kind of become synonymous with each other. Uh, you can argue about it in the comments back and forth if you want to. But essentially, I want stems, multi-track, separate files for each part of my song. So a couple options here I want to point out. Uh, if we go to all individual tracks, this is what I used to do uh, when live added this. This was like an awesome thing. Then what this is going to do is it's going to render each of my tracks separately. So side chain separately, sweep separately, noise intro loop separately, leads as a group, but then lead separately. That's going to give me all my return tracks separately and my master track uh, separately. That could be super nice as like a final archive version of this where you have everything together. Um, but that's not what we want for this, right? We don't want... Uh, uh, everything rendered out. I don't need my master track recorded out. I don't need my return tracks rendered out. Um, uh, I don't need leads as separate files, right? Because I group them together. And actually, I don't need my sidechain track up here rendered out. Uh, you can see it's actually muted and turned off. Uh, I don't need a version of that. So what I've started to use is under render track, I typically will select selected tracks only. Now, before you do that, uh, you want to make sure you do one very important step, which is actually select tracks. And I've made that mistake before. So what I will do is go and select my tracks right here. 
I'm going to do command shift R again, again, control shift R if you're on a PC and now I've got rendered track selected tracks only. Uh, so it's actually all these tracks and actually I made a mistake here because uh, I don't want my side chain track up there. So we'll just go from here to sweeps. Okay. We'll go back to export audio and video. So the length of my track is right. I've got selected tracks only. Now, really cool feature that was added. Uh, I believe this was live 10, live 10.5. I honestly can't remember. Uh, this is a really nice feature. If you were creating content in live, uh, producing a song, um, um, creating a song in live, and you're using effects in live, and particularly using effects either on your master uh, uh, bus here, your master track, or using effects in your return track, uh, there was no way to render your tracks with those effects, right? Um, you would have to go and, uh, you know, solo a track and render it running through the return track and capture that and then export, solo your track. And it just took forever. It was really a bummer when we had offline bounce for so long. So, Ableton added this feature, include return and master effects. And what that would mean is uh, if I have effects on my return tracks, so let's say, for instance, I, I added an echo and a delay uh, and a reverb for vocals or for this leads track here, and I turned up a send uh, to send that to the return track, then that effect is going to be captured in the render, which is super nice. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what this is, and you've never done this before. This kind of like the, you know, I used to have to walk uphill in the snow with no shoes kind of thing that your parents or grandparents maybe said. It's like, you have no idea how easy you have it. The kids have no idea how easy they have it these days with the include return and master effects uh, set in here. Uh, next thing you may want to consider, uh, I do not render as loop because I just need these these stems out as one time. I don't need them uh, to be able to loop. Uh, I, I'm not going to convert to mono because I'm going to leave separation. Uh, if I need to convert to mono, uh, I'm just going to route from a, a stereo track to a mono track so it will sum it for me. Uh, normalize, uh, I'll, often I'll turn on just to get everything at kind of the same uh, volume. Um, uh, depending on if you've manage your song well and you've got your volumes right you could turn off normalize if not normalize is kind of to me the lazy man's uh, way to get everything kind of equal which is good uh, analysis file i don't need uh, you could turn that on it's, it's not going to hurt anything but you want to decide what your sample rate is so uh, my project says it'll be rendered at 48 and down sample to 40 for one because the original sample rate for this is 48 so if i go and select this to 48 and you'll see this little icon here speaker icon that shows me the original project is at 48 if I render at 48, that's going to uh, speed up the process. It's not going to render and then down convert. Uh, but it's completely up to you. Here's the thing. I always tell people, 44.1, 16-bit is CD quality. If you play stems, put a live band playing on top of that, and a club with a bad sound system, not a single person in the entire planet will be able to hear the difference between your stems being rendered at 44.1 and then being rendered at 48. So just select 44.1, 16-bit, and, and move on. Next, PCM and Code PCM. We want to turn that on because we want to uh, choose wave. That's the, the version I would uh, render out. Again, for bit depth, I typically would leave everything 40 for 116. Uh, dither options, I just always leave this to no dither because I'm not smart enough to know what it means. It does something with something that affects something, but just leave it set to no dither. Um, I don't need MP3s. I'm not looking for um, uh, smaller versions of this, and I don't have a video of this. So now I'm going to hit export, and then I need to drop this on the desktop. So we'll call this dream stems okay and then this is going to run and what's nice is this is going to run uh offline uh which means it doesn't take as long as your song takes so often you know this is running at 30 percent, and i think i changed it back yeah change it to 40 for one so it's actually going to run through then it's going to down convert it to 40 for one uh and uh again it will end up 40 for one 16. and so i'm going to let this run for a second and i'll talk while that's running uh but again what's nice about this is i'm taking this song that uh that i created that i recorded and i'm getting this into a format that i can then use on stage it's going to give me flexibility to have separation of everything um, and you could see uh, it's resampling down converting everything it's kind of in the final stage uh, you can see it's running quickly, but um, I'm exporting these stems so that I, I don't load a live set with a lot of effects on it, a lot of plugins, particularly if you're using third party plugins, AUs, VSTs, you don't want to load those into your set. You just want to have an audio file so that everything's nice and neat and clean. Okay. So uh, I've got my stems rendered. Uh, and let's see if I can find these here. Okay, perfect. So these are over on my desktop. So now what I'm going to do is uh, do uh, don't save. 
in my files at 95 BPM. So then what I could do is drag these into my Ableton Live session here. Uh, and as I drag them in, I could hold command to put them in separate tracks. Uh, I've already beforehand, I double checked that record under record warp launch and preferences that auto warp long samples is disabled. And now with these loaded into my live set, uh, again, I have tons of freedom and flexibility to send these to multiple outputs, different discrete outputs on my interface, uh, which is great. Um, but I'm going to then take and format these songs uh, using a template that I created for live performance. And then I'm going to take those formatted songs and build a set of those songs, plus any songs I purchased, maybe songs created from another producer if I'm working with the artist, but they're all going to look exactly the same. And I'll be able to build my set really quickly because of that template. So if you're looking for a template that you can use that will allow you to format songs quickly, build a set really quickly then download my free tracks template. You could get that by heading to from studiostage.com slash template. Again, it's completely free. Uh, and you're going to find everything you need that's going to allow you to take a song like this with your stems, format it, add a markers track, a tempo track, uh, add click tracks if you need a click uh, to your file so that you can then use that on stage in a set and perform on stage and run tracks like a pro in Ableton Live. So again, head to from studiostage.com slash template to get that. And then also make sure you check out all the content posted on this channel. I post a new video every single day at 10 a.m. Central uh, to make sure you see it, to make sure you get notified. Hit subscribe so you can subscribe to this channel and then hit the bell icon so you're notified as soon as I post new content. Thanks so much for watching watching this uh, tutorial. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. See you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central. Take care, everybody. Bye.